computer science. We're going to talk about some algorithms we can write using regular for loops. Uh, this algorithm is finding consecutive values. So if you have a list um, of things, in this case, it's just a list of numbers. I want to identify if this list contains two consecutive values that are the same for this particular problem. So consecutive just means next to each other, one after the other. So in this example, I have two consecutive values that are the same. There's two sevens next to each other. In this example, we have two values that are the same. There's two sevens, but they're not consecutive. So if my problem is trying to answer that there are two consecutive values, this would be a true uh, example, and this would be a false example. So we're going to talk about how we can accomplish this using a for loop. This is the plan uh, for our algorithm. So we're going to create a variable to store the answer. It's almost always step one of, of any algorithm. Create a variable to store our answer. Uh, we'll have to figure out what, what type of data this variable should be. Um, we're going to iterate over all of the elements of the list except the first one. OK? That's, that's important because we're looking for consecutive values. That means we're going to skip the first one. And that'll make sense in a second. Um, we will store the element at the index i in a variable. That's the first thing you do in any for loop you write is get the value at index i, store in a variable. Then we will store the variable, the element at index i minus 1 in a variable. That's why we're skipping the first one in the loop. So we take the, val var the value at index i and the value at index i minus 1. They go into their own variables. We compare those two variables for equality. Um, what exactly that means depends on uh, what you're comparing. It depends on that problem. How do you tell if two things are equal? Um, if they are equal, then we're going to update our answer variable. And then we will return our answer. So this is our, this is our algorithm. We're going we're gonna to walk through this with a, a specific problem. So let's say we have an array list of bear objects. We're going to identify if two consecutive bears have the same height. Um, so our bear data will have a class called bear, which has an instance variable keeping track of their height, and they have a get height method, which will tell us the value of the height. There's probably a bunch of other stuff bears can do, uh, but for our particular problem, we don't care. We only care that we can get the height of the bear. And what we care about is, are there two bears next to each other that have the same height? That's what we're interested in finding out. So we're going to write this method called um, consamutive, and it's going to be true if there are two bears next to each other with the same height. It will be false in any other case. And this is the same plan that we went over. This is going to pop right above me. And we're going to walk through this and um, write this algorithm out, convert the plan from English into uh, code. So the first thing we're going to do is create a variable to store the answer. That's the first thing we always do. So the type of our answer is going to be Boolean because that's the type of the method that we're writing. So Boolean answer equals something. Um, so what value should we initialize this uh, answer to be? The question you want to ask yourself is, if there were no bears, so the list is empty, there are no bears, what should the answer be? What should this method return if there are no bears? Are there any bears next to each other that are the same height? No, there aren't. There's no bears at all. So there's no bears next to each other, so there's no bears next to each other that are the same height. So false would be our answer, our default answer here. Okay. Um, the other way to think about that is inside the loop, we've decided that um, if they're equal, we're going to update the answer. Well, what are we going to update the answer to if we have two, two heights that are equal? We would update it to true, right? So if we're updating it to true, we should be updating it from something that's not true. So we would want this to be the opposite of that. It's another way to think about that problem. Um, once I create this variable, that's step one, I like the next thing I do is to skip way to the end and return the answer. So um, it's just, again, it's just so that I don't forget. Once I get so excited about answering this problem and being successful and like I solved this problem, it's very easy to forget the last line to return an answer. I've had students who get everything right and then on the AP test they forget to return the answer and they lose some points. Um, it's a real bummer. So I like to just start there. I write my variable to store the answer, and I write at the bottom of the page to return that answer. And then I go back up to the next part of my plan, which is to iterate over 
all the elements of the list except the first one. So this is going to be a for loop. Um, there's a couple reasons why this is a for loop, but the, the, the main reason here is since we're skipping the first element, we can't use a for each loop because the for each loop always starts at the beginning and always goes to the end. We want to start at uh, the second one in the list, index one, and go to the end. Since we're not starting at the beginning, it has to be a for loop. We need control over where we start and where we end. So this is pretty much our standard for loop with the exception that we are starting at index one instead of starting at index zero. We're checking while well, i is less than bears.length. Where did bears come from? That's the name of the list from our parameter list. So we're looping over this list up here using that name, bears.length, uh, and i++, plus plus because we're going to look at every single one starting at index one. Um, oh, and I asked that question there. So why are we starting at one? Because we're skipping the first one. The first one is stored at index zero. We're going to skip it. We're going to start at index one. Uh, then the next thing we're going to do is store the element at index i in a variable. This is the first thing you always, 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 always do inside of a for loop is you create a variable and you get the value from the list and you store it in that variable. So the type draw some arrows here. The type of this variable is the same as the type of the list. So it's in a list of bears. I'm making a bear variable. The name of the list is bears. So I'm doing bears.getI. I is coming from the loop. It's the index that I'm using. Uh, I called the variable bear because that's the singular version of the name of the list. Um, it's fine to have a variable that's the same name as the type. Notice the casing is different. Types have capital letters. Capital B bear is the type bear. Lowercase b bear is a variable name called bear. And th those are those are different because the because uh, Java is case sensitive, so it knows the difference between those. Um, and I wrote here, always the first thing you always always do in a loop is get the value index i and store it in a variable. Always start that way. Um, the next step of our plan is to get the element at index i minus one and store that in a variable. This is gonna look like a very similar line of code. I'm gonna call this one prev for previous, but it's got four letters just like bears, so it kind of lines up, it's nice. So bear prev is assigned bears.get i minus one. <clears throat> this is why we skipped the first index because index i, the first loop will get us index one, Index i minus one will get us index zero. One minus one is zero. So our first iteration, we get the value, the, the second bear and the first bear. So our loop skipped the first, our, our, our iteration skipped the first one, but we actually get the first one here because we're, we're comparing consecutive bears. So we have to get two bears to compare. We're getting one of them at index i and we're getting another one that comes before it and we can compare those two bears, okay? So we've got two bears, bear and prev. The next step is to compare them for equality. So we're just going to check um, with an if statement. Whenever you're comparing things, when you're checking things, when you're identifying things, you should use an if statement. If <clears throat> bear is equal to prev, then we're going to do something. Um, is this how we compare two bear objects for equality? Is that going to work? <clears throat> if we want to know if these are two bears that have the same height, right? Because that's what, technically what we want to check we look at the problem are the two bears that have the same height we're not checking if they're the same bear we're checking if they're two different bears that are the same height so we actually don't want to compare bear to prev we should look at our oh i didn't put it up we should look at our code that we were given that described bear methods and we should probably use some of those methods like get height um so what we really want to compare is the height of the bear to the height of the previous bear see if those are equal. If those are equal, then we want to um, update our answer variable. So what should we update it to? We're going to change answer to something. Um, well, it was false. We just found two bears that are next to each other, <clears throat> the bear and the previous bear. They have the same height, so we should change it. <coughs> Excuse me, to true. And that that's the algorithm. I'm going to add some comments there. This is just copying kind of the plan into comment form. <coughs> um, so we get our answer. We default it to false. 
We loop through everything, skipping the first one. We get the bear within the loop. We get the bear index i and the bear index i minus one, two consecutive bears, two consecutive elements from the list. We compare them for equality. In this case, we're comparing their heights to see if their heights are equal. And we are changing the answer to true if the heights are equal, because that's the problem we were trying to solve. And then finally, we return our answer, which will be true if we ever found two consecutive bears with the same height. And it will be false if this was a never a true statement. And that is the algorithm for um, finding two consecutive values that meet some requirement. This requirement might not always be equality. Um, so what would change in a particular problem is the name of the list, the type of the values you're getting in this condition. Um, but other than that, this is pretty much, this is how you compare consecutive values in the list. Important thing to remember, um, skip the first element and use the minus one, uh, get two elements from the list, the one at I and I minus one. And that is computer science.